Hi, I'm so glad that you've joined me for day five of our Read Through Psalms 119 challenge. Today we are reading Psalms 119 verses 33 through 40. And again, we are going to learn something awesome that's going to help us in our relationship with God, also help us in our daily lives so that we can experience the victory that God has died to give us. Let's dive right in. It says in verse 33, Teach me your decrees, O Lord. I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding and I will obey your instructions. I will put them into practice with all my heart. Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness is found. We're going to leave, read some more verses, but right now I just wanted to stop and point out a few things. I like to give tips as I'm sharing these devotions with you, these little Bible studies, of what helps me in my daily study of the Word of God. I, I've already told you I like to write a lot of notes and I like to draw out diagrams because that's how my brain can translate what I am reading so that my brain understands it. So what I did is I wrote down what the psalmist here is asking God to do in his life. And he's first of all saying, teach me, God, your decrees. And then he says what he's going to do. I will keep them to the end. He says, give me your understanding. We've already learned in the last couple of times that we've met together that he's saying, remove anything that is keeping me from understanding you. And so it says, um, I will obey your instructions and I will put them into practice with all my heart. So that stops me right there. He's saying, this is something I'm going to do, God. I'm going to put whatever you teach me into practice, and I'm going to do it with all my heart. Now, many of you know my background as a professional water skier. I know what it is to put things in practice, and I know what it is to do things with purpose with your whole heart, and I know what it is to go out there and just go through the motions. What he's saying here is, I'm not going to go through the motions with you, God. I'm going to put into practice what you have told me to do, and I'm going to do it with all my heart. And let me tell you something, that commitment right there, whether it's spiritually speaking or whether it's in athletics or whether it's with your health and your diet or your lifestyle, when you commit to do something with all of your heart, with purpose, what happens is you get results. And in the case with the Lord and your relationship with Him, when you love Him with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, when you walk in obedience to the best of your ability and you follow after God's Word with all of your heart, I don't like to say you'll receive results because it's not, we don't serve God to get results in our life, but the reality is things happen in our life when we follow after God. I started keeping a list today of words that are just jumping out at me as we have already studied um, the previous four stanzas of, of Psalms 119. Some of the things I wrote down that the why we would want to follow after God and obey His, put them into practice with all of our heart and obey His commands is because they're good counsel. We've already learned that. They revive us. Remember, I think it was yesterday we learned, or whenever you're watching this, it was day four, I think, where he says, yeah, I lie in the dust. Revive me, God. The word of God revives us. It restores us. It encourages us. It fills us with joy. These are things we've already learned. It, it keeps us pure, away from sin. It blesses us. It saves us. It sets us free. It makes us happy. It fills us with joy. It renews our life. It gives us life. We're, we should start really keeping a list of these things as we go through our study because the psalmist here knows that. Now, does that mean that he does it perfectly? No, doesn't do it perfectly. And how do I know that? Because most likely this was written by David. We don't know that for sure. But you, whoever it is, you can see in their writing up and down that you know they're seeking after God, they're, they're putting everything into practice, but yet at the same time, he's going, help me, God. <laughs> I need your help. Pick me up. Um, give me a desire for your word. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. I mean, it goes on and on. So he's saying, I will put into practice with all of my heart. I will be a doer of the word. Have you ever looked at James? James 1. I'm going to try to turn there really quick. Ah, 
sorry. Should have had that marked. Well, I got Hebrews marked, and James comes after Hebrews. Here we go. James, verse 1, chapter 22. Now, James is the brother of Jesus, and he's saying, don't just listen to God's word. You've got to do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. Now, I think it was in day four, we also said, keep me from lying to myself. Well, knowing the word of God is a way to keep yourself from lying to yourself. Because he says, otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. If you look at the word of God and you don't walk in obedience to it, you're lying to yourself. You're fooling yourself. If you listen and don't obey, it's like looking in the mirror at your face. You see yourself and you walk away and you completely forget what you've seen, which basically means it's like right now, if I take my, my little hair thing down, I go look in the mirror and it's just like I see a mess, but I'm not gonna do anything about it. I'm just gonna walk away and forget the things that I've seen instead of taking the time to apply it and fix it, to put the makeup on, to, to make any adjustments or put it in a, in a ponytail and hide the mess. <laughs> He's saying, you know, look in the mirror of God's word and make changes. Why? Because you're going to be blessed, it says in James, but you're also going to be set free. But I know this was this heart, the desire of the heart of the psalmist, but you know what? They, he didn't always do it perfectly, and that's okay because God's not looking for perfection. He's looking for a heart that's bent toward God. And so he says here in verse 35, make me walk along the path of your commands. Don't let me get away with anything, he's saying, God, make me. And I've, I've prayed that because like Paul says in the New Testament, he says, the things I want to do, I don't do them. And the things I don't want to do, I do them. And I think that's the heart here of the psalmist. He's going, I want to follow after you. I want to do those things, but I keep messing up. Will you make me obey them, God? Will you make me? Walk along the path of your commands, that safe road of life. And here's why. He says, because I know that that is where my happiness is found. Verse 35, I know that's where my happiness is found. Are you looking for happiness today? Do you want to be filled with joy? What's the difference between happiness and joy? Happiness is usually an emotion we feel when a circumstance happens that pleases us and it gets us excited, gets us happy. But true happiness which crosses over into joy joy is something that you have it sustains you it's it's the joy of the lord is our strength it's something that is not determined by your circumstance it is determined by god that's in you because we've already learned it's a fruit of the spirit so you draw close to him and his word and as you walk it out you're filled with joy and you will be happy we all want to be happy. I think this whole world is looking for happiness. They're just not looking in the right place. The psalmist here has found the answer. He's also saying, give me an eagerness for your laws. I would rather have that, he says, than a love for money. I don't know this for sure, but just the way he says it, give me an eagerness for your law rather than a love for money. This might be a struggle for them, wanting the things of the world, wanting money. And he's saying, no, I know this is a temporary thing. Help me, God, to love you more. He says in verse 37, turn my eyes from worthless things. So I ask myself today, what is a worthless thing? A worthless thing is something that has no eternal value. As it says in Matthew, it's something that moths and rust can destroy. You know, a trophy, all those trophies I sought after, in the end really are worthless unless they were used for the glory of God. And that's what I love about bringing God into everything that we do, whether it's being a parent, whether it's being an athlete, when we bring God into the ordinary things and the things that we're doing in our life, he takes those really that could be worthless, not, no, not being a parent, but I'm just saying um, like the accolades we have in jobs and careers, he takes those things and he gives them an eternal value and they are used to touch and impact lives. He says, reassure me of your promise. Maybe this person's hope is wavering a little bit and, and they've had some really hard things and we've already talked about the way people are coming after him and, and he's hurt and he's tired. He's laid in the dust. He's, he's saying, God, revive me. 
Restore me. I, I know where my happiness is found. It's in you. Now, will you just help me? Reassure me of your promise. That's why it's so important to know the Word of God so that when we are laying face down in the dirt, we can say, God, I know your Word says you will never leave me nor abandon me. I know that your Word says that you make ways through the wilderness, that you are fighting my battles. I know, God, your word says that you are faithful to bring to completion everything you have ever started in my life. God, your word says you will not fail me. And greater are you, God, that is in me than he that is in the world. If you know those things, the promises of God, and you stand fast on them and you cling to them when you're down in the dirt, those are the things that are gonna keep you going. They will sustain you and they will come to pass because not one, one word of God ever falls to the ground without accomplishing what it set out to do and what it promised to do. Why? Because God cannot lie. So you have to remember that. And then he says, help me abandon my shameful ways. This is how I know that he's not perfect. He's saying, God, make me follow after your commands. Give me understanding. Lord, turn my eyes from worthless things. Give me a love for you more than a love for money. Then he says, help me to leave those shameful things that I keep going back to. Maybe that's you today. You keep trying to move forward with God, but you keep going back like Paul and doing the shameful things you wished you didn't do. I know I often do things I don't want to do. Gossip or, or um, judge someone or become afraid or become anxious. And, and I'm saying, God, help me to not do that. Help me to stand firm. Help me to be full of joy. Help me to love people as you would have me to do that. And then he ends with, I long to obey your commandments. Renew my life with your goodness. Renew my life with your goodness. Father, I just come to you today and I ask you to renew our life with your goodness. Father, we learned in session four that you revive us out of the dust and now we want to ask you to renew us, make us new. God, because your word says that when we come to you, we are new creations. The old has passed away. Behold, all things are new. Make us new today. Restore us, revive us, and renew us in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to close with a couple of questions. I always want to turn this back around to you and to me. Is there something in your life that you may love more than God? Like the psalmist here, we saw that he had a heart for money. He had a heart for shameful things. He, he often chased after worthless things. Are there any worthless things in your life? Or maybe things that you're doing apart from God, and he needs to come into those things so he can give them an eternal value, and they won't be worthless any longer. Take time to, to think about that in your life. How can you put God's commands in practice? He says here, the psalmist says, I'm gonna practice this with all my heart. Are you going through the routines of Christianity and reading the word and it's a checklist to you? Or are you putting them into practice? When you look in the mirror of God's word, are you allowing him to change your heart? Are you doing your part and changing the way you think and walking in obedience and letting things go? and and so that's just a question. It's going to be different for all of us. And what do you need to ask God to help you with? That too is going to be different as well for each one of us. But let me tell you something. Whatever it is, God is able to do abundantly more than you could ever imagine or think in that area of your life. Ask him, just like the psalmist, say, God, come and help me. And he will. God bless you, and I look forward to our next time together as we continue to study Psalms 119. God bless you.